1848, a discovery was made that changed the destiny of California and the country. Smaller than a fingernail, light as a feather, but shined and glimmered and contained a dream as big as America itself. It brought a hundred thousand people from across the globe seeking fortune to California's shores. But how did the gold rush actually affect those people and the country? Well, that's the treasure we're out to discover. I'm Dan Luer, and this is History for Little Humans. So before we get going, I just want to remind teachers and homeschool parents that there are lesson plans that go with this episode on my website, historyforhumans.com, and there are direct links below. So our exploration question for today's episode is, what impact did the gold rush have on America and the people that lived through it? But shovels out, because we got some history to dig through first. In early 1848, on the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains, James Wilson Marshall was working on a water-powered mill when he saw a glimmering in the stream below. Bending down to pick it up, Marshall was instantly enchanted. He said, it made my heart thump, for I was certain it was gold. He became partners with the property owner, John Sutter. And it was there, at Sutter's Mill, that the gold rush began. Though they tried to keep their secret under wraps, news got out. When Sutter sold some gold to a shop owner from San Francisco who promised to keep it a secret, he instead ran through the streets parading the vial of gold and shouting about the news. That's all it took. Soon, the country and the world was rushing in to stake their claims to fortune. From all over the country and the world, people were stampeding into California. Many sold everything they had, mortgaged their homes, borrowed what they could, and set off. The first to arrive came by boat from Oregon, Hawaii, and Mexico to become prospectors. Prospectors are those looking for wealth by finding minerals like gold. So many came so quickly that Sutter's property was overridden with squatters and prospectors. At first, those on the East Coast thought those heading west were fools, chasing a fantasy. Fools, gold, and dreamers is all that is. But when President Polk attested to the discovery, they too were struck with gold fever. So many came in the year 1849 that they became known as 49ers. No, not those 49ers, these 49ers. But that is where the football team gets its name. The safest but most expensive way to California was by boat that would travel around South America on a journey that took up to eight months. To save time and money, others departed at Nicaragua or Panama and crossed the jungles of the country before boarding again. The most common voyage, though, was on ox-driven wagons on a journey that took up to six months. And people as far as China, Australia, South America, and Europe came as well. But no matter where they came from or on what route, nearly everyone who arrived in California was utterly exhausted, nearly starving, but anxious to get on the yellow brick road to their destinies. All prospectors needed a few things, a pan to sift for gold, a pick, shovel, some durable clothes, and most of all, hope, because the work was often grueling and miserable. While the weather might have been nice and sunny most of the year, many prospectors waded in ice-cold streams, digging through the mud, or striking for hours on end into rock and mountain sides. And since most left family and friends behind, it was awfully lonely, and there were few women around. Some towns were upwards of 90% men. 
Like women, food too was hard to come by, and many a man labored day and night with little in their bellies, making illness all too common. However, all held off for the belief that fortune was right around the corner, but more often than not, so too was failure. Still yet, between 1848 and 1853, nearly $2 billion of gold was extracted. That's more than 750,000 pounds, and that's no minor bit of gold. Get it? Minor bit of gold? That's a knee slapper. And others made their fortunes in other ways, selling goods to the miners in need. And that brings us to our quiz flash from the past. Which of these classic American products do you guess came from the gold rush? Ketchup, blue jeans, the automobile, or the light bulb? That's right, it's blue jeans. These things came right from Cali's Gold. An entrepreneur named Levi Strauss, sound familiar? began making rugged denim pants with rivets that were in high demand by miners, lumberjacks, and farmers. Strauss, a Jewish-German immigrant, probably made more money than any miner ever did. Not all that glitters is gold. The gold rush, though, didn't just change the people. It changed the country. The first real Western towns developed outside the mines. The classic main street centered around the saloon, a few shops, a brothel, and a hotel. Being the West, the government was out of sight and out of mind. Justice was often settled at 12 paces and determined by who had the fastest draw. Mr. S. Shaflet here describes the lawlessness in these boom towns. There's a good deal of sin and wickedness going on here. Stealing, lying, swearing, drinking, gambling, and murdering. Almost every public house is a place for gambling. And this appears to be the greatest evil that prevails here. Men make and lose thousands in a night. And if they lose all, they go out the next day and dig up more. We are trying to get laws here to regulate things but it will be very difficult to get them executed. And the great diversity of people and cultures in California added to the violence and conflict. There were many attacks against the Chinese, free black people, and Native Americans. Tragically, but maybe predictably, the population of Native Americans fell by nearly 85% during the gold rush. However, at the same time, the population of non-Native Americans in California grew dramatically, from fewer than 1,000 in 1847 to over 100,000 in just three years. With a growing population and boom towns, well, booming, California applied for statehood and entered the Union in 1850 as a free state built on gold. The gold rush didn't last long. By 1853, it was pretty much over. By then, wealthy corporations took over the mining business, blasting away the mountainsides with hydraulic jets that no prospector could compete with. The boom towns sometimes turned to ghost towns, and some into permanent settlements with law and order. But that dream that made so many from around the world leave all they had to seek fortunes and freedom is still very much a part of the American story today. Because remember that history is the light that guides us forward. So thanks for learning some today. This has been History for Little Humans.